Welcome back to an Act Analysis and Tips for Animators. And today I'm going to continue with season two of Succession, and I'm going to cover things like interaction with props, posing in characters, how you can have a character react and listen to audio, and a bunch of stuff more. This time it's packed, so let's go. In the previous upload, I covered episode one to four. This is gonna cover episode five to seven. But before I continue, hi, my name is JD and I do acting analysis tips like these. I do animation analysis tips. I do animation lectures. I do rig reviews, proc reviews. I do a bunch of stuff. This is my pitch at the beginning. This is the channel. Check it out, browse around. If you like it, subscribe so you don't miss any of those uploads. And if not, that's also okay. Just hang around, kind of listen and see how it goes. But that's it, gotta pitch it at the very beginning. So let's start with the first sequence. And this one is about character reactions in a way where she says something expecting him to give her an immediate reply, something that she wants to hear from him. And I love this because he doesn't give that to her. She says it, reacts, and he just has a bit of a hmm, and then walks away. And you can tell that she is fairly bummed, did not expect that. But what she does with this is so great. She says that little line, like, Something like a little baby, like there, there's something within the line in terms of baby. You don't want to spell too much here. And she has a little thing here, and it's almost like she expects it here. Like, oh, I'm just gonna be you know, a little bending down a little bit. I'm not gonna go higher. I'm just gonna be a little bit of submissive. Like, I just wanna say a little joke and hope that I'm gonna hear back from you. And she holds that pose. It's not, it's not coming out of his mouth. He's waiting. She's waiting. And then she has that moment of, okay, but she doesn't really say anything. It's that little uncomfortable look of, hmm. And then he has his little, um, okay. And she realizes that didn't go as planned. Now, I know this is tricky to do in animation, but. But you know, you always have the actors, the context, this is season two, like there's a lot more we get from like little looks and expressions and like, you know, things that are unspoken between character relationships. But what you can take from this is that as always, and I've said this before, when you have a line, right? This is my usual, <laughs> these are my scribbles for dialogue. She says something and then you're, in a way your task as an animator is done. Like a lot of times you do lip sync and that's it. But if you have room tone, you have extra sound where you can go, I can actually continue to animate pantomime and add something at the end, this would be it. That little reaction there, wait, and then oh, didn't, didn't quite work out. Just to give it a little extra button to the, to the lip sync. And it could be something where you're changing the relationship, there's some subtext that comes out, or whatever you can do. To me, this is your moment to be very creative at that point where you get out of your lip sync moment that's right there. So I've had a couple examples, and once again, this is another one, but I'm just a big fan of if this is your lip sync, what if you could do something before or and after, right? Could be also both, but think about that because that is really where you can be really creative. Because here you can be creative, but you're still somewhat tied, not somewhat, you are tied to the rhythm and the lip sync. But you could do something with it, but this is really where the creativity is. I'm looking at my drawing, I'm slightly confused, like a weird alien creature. Anyway, this one is about props. If you've watched my channel, you know I'm a massive fan of props. And why is this here? It's because he, here, you can see this here, he's washing his hands, they're wet, he's trying to dry them off, and he's looking around, he sees there's nothing there. There's no, you know, there are no towels, there's no fan, whatever, to dry his hands. So what does he do? He actually uses the jacket and the sleeve of this character. Super rude. <laughs> it's like unbelievable. And he's clearly upset. And I'm showing this is because anything like this where you have whatever, like you can pick anything, like there's a lamp, there's a glass, clothing, all of that stuff you can use for a reason. It's also, he's fairly small compared to him. So for me, it's always, if you have a relationship in terms of lip sync, body mechanics, pantomime, and you consider height and, and you know dynamics and the hierarchy, whatever, how could you show that this guy does not respect this guy at all? And if you happen to have something where you have control on a prop, then you can use something like this. And this is why I'm always a big fan of props. He could say something like that. He could have a look, of course. This would be great acting of just either performance or pantomime, whatever. But if you want to add something where you have some complicated hand animation, again, I'm thinking in terms of animation, it will be interesting to show off and kind of also for you as an exercise to do something like this. This is really dark, you can barely see it. But I love the idea of him using his clothes to dry his hands off, because it's just such, such a rude thing to do. And just that, that interaction tells us so much about him and how he feels you know, towards him. Here's another clip that is all about reactions. He gives her a compliment. I'm actually gonna, gonna let it play out so you can hear the audio. You know how you're so efficient and good at your job? Well. <laughs> right, so that's your first compliment. He's very nice about it. Your job? Well, 
And she has a bit of a tilt towards him. It's like, oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you, but also sort of like invisible. <laughs> then he goes straight into this very dismissive. Sort of like invisible. Uh, you're invisible. Like wallpaper, like a boring old sort of nothing, like a competent kind of <laughs> He's so rude. Again, he's so rude. Like a boring old sort of nothing, like a competent kind of And it's this. It's mainly I'm showing you because of this. It's also just great. Like he just gets really explicit here. I'm not gonna show this, but at the end, I love her reaction to this. I have thoughts, but continue. Well, just <laughs> and I love her blink. Watch thoughts, her. But continue. Well, just floating. It's just that little. I'm offended. I'm bored. Like, what is this going? Like, this is to me again. Like, every frame matters. Is is it a fast blink? Is it a slow blink? Does it show us that she is annoyed, bored, or maybe interested? Who knows? But the main reason I'm showing this is because. As always, you have lip sync. If you watch this, you know, if you watch my channel before, you know I'm always harping about this. But to me, this is a great example. He says a bunch of stuff that is really rude. And sometimes it's just fun to cut away, even though he keeps talking, right? There's still stuff going on here. But you cut to a reaction. And just that, the contrast of whatever he's saying and you're hearing as an audience, and you're having a reaction, then you cut to someone having probably the same reaction as you can be really funny. And it could also be something where you start like this, you show off this is the relationship in terms of like the, the the setup in a way, right? This is where we are. That's the distance between the two. These are the two characters. And then we cut to a close-up lip sync that you can do. But then we cut right away to this. And maybe your your next five seconds are just about this character reacting to what she or whoever you're animating is hearing. And I think that to me is just really interesting because as an animator, again, if you start just starting out. You don't have to worry too much about the lip sync, right? It can be complicated, but you can just focus on someone listening. And then it's all about the thought process, right? She hears it, she has to process it, and then she's going to react to it. And having a character think and process and react is just really interesting to animate and also to watch. So to me, there's always a great variation of a lip sync where you don't actually animate to everything that this character is saying. You actually cut away and show off what the character, the other character is is thinking about and reacting to. This one is about how <laughs> how a character, this, this character here, is kind of shutting off a discussion or uh, in a way something that they want to say. So basically, they are interrogating him, and I don't want to say too much. I gave him some spoilers just in case you haven't seen this. And he realizes I don't really want to be here. I gotta get out. I gotta I gotta find my way to respond to this. So attention, but I really need to be. <laughs> And I love his reaction, like the way he says it to, I really need to go pee. The way he kind of leans forward with his face, it's great. But that's his way out. He goes, well, I need to go pee. And they have the reaction of, well, we would really like you to stay here. Like, we need to continue this, this discussion. He doesn't care because he needs to get out of there. So he just gets up. That's already a difference in terms of like the hierarchy of height in a way. Like we're on the same level, but now I'm going to get up here. I'm talking down to, again, I'm reading into this, but I'm talking down to you. I have the higher ground here. I'm going to take control of the situation and get out of there. And if I keep playing this with the sound... Gonna, oh. But I'm, I'm so sorry, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, Love this. They're just about to go away and he just goes... Okay. Uh, Love that. I love that. It's basically, I'm snapping. That means that's it. I'm done. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm out of here. And I love that you even have the sound of this. Uh, like, don't even say anything. I know I'm wrong and I know that I'm here at the guilty person, but... I'm just going to take control of this and then get out. And I love this. I love that that just that type of gesture okay. uh, that kind of underlines the well, I'm out. So he's kind of nervous and 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 not super confident, uh, while at the same time still letting them know through this that this is it and I'm out. I just love that little end thing here. And his next clip is again something where you could do something at the end of a line. So he has the line here. He says, "Hey, there was something really interesting about your memo," but he's kind of making fun of her. So then at the end he has. He can't even finish it without smiling. He said, instead of memo, he says memo, and has that little, does that. I love that little end of that, pressing the lips and that little playful thing with the finger. Watch this, just that. And you can tell that he's not really meaning what he's saying. Like he doesn't really think that it was good. He's kind of like memo, and then makes fun of her. Again, it's something where you have your line. I'm repeating myself, but again, it's just, I think this is really cool where you have the line and this is what you're animating to. And at the end, you finish the line with this. It just kind of gives it that, like I said, that extra button. You might have a certain attitude and that's that little pantomime at the end can really kind of re-emphasize or give it the spin or whatever it is. And as I said before, it's your chance, it's your opportunity to add that extra little 
creative button at the end that's yours that doesn't come from the audio. I just love that. And actually there's another one about reaction. So I guess this whole theme in this upload is about reaction. She is proposing to her that she could work for whatever, you know, I'm not gonna spoil too much for what she stands for, her, her company and the people she knows and so on. Now, this is again all about reactions. So I'm gonna play this without the sound and just look at her. This is immediate. Did you just say this? Did I hear that I could work for you? That's odd. And I love that she wants to say something, but she also wants to keep listening. So it's this little long anticipation before she says anything. And then it's kind of like she says, you know, someone has a certain regard for you. She's almost a bit embarrassed or she wants to check. Is anybody hearing this? Because that's a bit of a traitorous thing to do and maybe to consider. <laughs> and you get that really like, am I really hearing this? And she settles down, shoulders go down. It's almost like I need to really sit down and listen to this. Because this is actually interesting to me. And it's still, but you still got that dart of, am I really hearing what I think I'm hearing? So good. She continues on and it kind of re underlines of this is what we kind of need you for. It could be really cool. Then her reaction again is. <laughs> she doesn't say anything. It's a long way of a. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on. Did I hear this? It's great. Look, look at how she, she closes the mouth here. Reacts. Does it again. Does it again. Like she wants to say something, but she just can't believe what she just heard. And I love that she goes from. Okay, I'm interested, but I'm gonna lean away from like, really? Like, I gotta, I gotta, it's, again, it's once again me reading into this, but like, I need to take a step back and really look at the situation. Did I really just hear what you said? And then she goes, uh, me? And then I love that, that she doesn't say anything. It's more like a, yep. And then look at her again. Like, she is very nervous. And she said at this point, this is never gonna happen. I love that she, again, she looks away and back at her, it's almost like she doesn't want to say it out loud because it's almost too good to be true in a way. And again, there might be people listening. And then she goes, I don't know, but I can get it full. And then she continues on saying, well, I can make it happen. People could hear it. And then we could, we could all think about it and look at her reaction to that. That's so great. So again, you don't hear this and, and I could blend in, but it's basically she talks more about how this plan could work. And this is all about her. You got this reaction right there. And just that here, she says, you can take the job. And I love that. It's very attentive, right? No more darts. She's not moving around. She's really listening now, but she's still reacting to certain words like here, like, really, did you just say this? And then she says something about her dad, which is always a bit of a problem. And then you get this reaction of, whoa, I don't know but she thinks about it. I love all this, the complexity of all of this. I'm just playing this out. Instead of just talking about this and interrupting this, I'm gonna keep playing so you can see the reaction here. Okay, I heard this. Oh, this is really difficult, but I could consider this. Hmm, it's not too bad. Well, um, <laughs> she waits and then she goes, I have to think about it. Oh, this is so good. That to me is so interesting. That succession here, no pun intended, of thought processes, you know, she hears this. And then has the initial reaction of, that's not a good idea. But then, hmm, I could actually do this. We need a little bit of a swallow there too. And then back to a very diplomatic, well, let me think about this. And then she has that thing of, hmm, okay, you can think about this. And she has that moment of, thank you. Even still then, doesn't quite believe it. And she breaks eye contact with a little bit of a dart over there. I know I talked over all this, interrupted a bunch of stuff, but this is to me, again, underlining the, the awesomeness of you don't have to animate to all the lip sync of one character. You might as well, you might have audio of just one character, right? You, you think it's just the one person shot. Just start with a couple words, maybe half a sentence or whatever it is. And then you actually cut away and then you cut to another character we don't really hear, right? Maybe you can add some giggles or laughters, or exhale if you want to. But it's just really interesting to see that whole thought process because we read all into her face. She's shocked. She's nervous. She's really thinking about this here, all of this, especially that part here. So great. And that to me is just a really cool challenge as an animator to really portray the thought process, the, you know, the, the processing of information and the reaction of it. I don't know, that to me is just really, really cool. 
totally switching gear. This is more about posing and composition. Again, this might be tricky. You don't want to have that much handheld and maybe the character, you know, this far off. In this case, he's really, really small with this overbearing fate here, the talking over there. It's very deliberate in terms of composition. But to me, it's more this thing of he has his hands in his pockets and just the way he sits down, knees together, hands together, he just, he just seems very, very weak and just not a very powerful character. In general, he isn't really. And that's just something for you to think about whenever you do anything in terms of animation. This is more a broader point in terms of posing. If he would sit down like this, and again, I want to spoil what's going on. It's a very heavy significance of this character in relationship with this character. But imagine he would sit down and have his legs crossed and he would be leaning and maybe even bored and kind of maybe playing around with some toy or something or look at his phone or something completely different relationship to this subject. Again, I don't want to spoil this versus what we have here. So as always, what is the headspace of your character? What is their emotion? What's the attitude? What's the personality? And within the context of your shot, is it within another character? So is it something where it says like a, a certain dynamic between two characters we see on screen? Is it between a character and a prop? And again, this could be a character as a prop in a way, but just think about what is the relationship of this character within the space that you're framing in your animation? And that space could be occupied by props, like I said, a character, and then think about how that's going to influence the character and how you're going to pose that character. Because that's all we get as an audience. We're reading into the face, but here the face is small. So now you want to showcase the body language, the body posture and his emotions through, you know, the body language, as I said. And then this one is about posing as well in a way, but it's more about character attitude and contrast. So you see this looks like an expensive car. So you would think of, hmm, the character's coming out. Even if you don't know any of these, you think, oh, maybe they're dressed in a certain way. Okay, that seems fairly elegant. Maybe the way they walk is a specific way of, okay, maybe that is their typical way of maybe a rich person walking, whatever it is, right? But then you have him <laughs> and then he does this. And it's not even the hand here so that the food can drop in his mouth. No, it's his, the fingers are touching obviously the food, but also the mouth. So there could be all kinds of stuff and saliva on it. And then as the character continues, we don't see this afterwards, but they meet another person. So the context could also be that, wow, this is in a way really gross. He doesn't have a napkin. And maybe the next shot is him shaking hands with another character. So to me, it's interesting in terms of, A, it's an unexpected thing of, this is not really how people eat in public. That tells us something about the character. And then the contrast of, your expectations of whoever is in this car and how they would behave is completely the opposite when you see this. Now, I just like this. And again, this also goes into props, right? This is a prop, let's go back here, that sets a certain expectation. So you can go against that with contrast, which is this. The prop is food. So again, you use that to tell us more about the character. And then at the end, you can also just have the character movement, right? Just the way he walks. He's very relaxed, lots of swinging in his arms. So for me, again, it's these and I keep harping about props. If, if uh, not that many are watching this series, but for those who are watching, you know I talk so much about props and sets and how characters are reacting to props and sets or how they're interacting with them and so on. And to me, it's not just because, well, I just want to use a prop because I don't know what to do with my hands or I need to, I don't want to animate, you know, dangling arms or something. It's not just there as a crutch where, well, I have free hands. Let me just add an object in there for them to, to handle. That's not the point. My point is always whatever is in that scene, it could be a prop you can hold a prop as in like production is items of a set or something or like the car for instance all of that to me is an opportunity to expand the character beyond just the physical body language and lip sync because if you have someone let's say that eats something really slimy and does this and then shakes their hands that's just an added visual of wow that person is really rude versus maybe shaking hands and then lo not looking at the person like that could also be rude so to me it's like the the extra level that you could use to show how rude a character is by using props obviously you don't have to use props even again, reels, you don't have to have props and sets. It could just be a character in an empty scene. There are lots of great shots like that. I'm just saying, if you want to practice that, if you want to practice shots with props and sets, that's how I would think about it. It's not just there to add something just because you want to deal with constraints. It's what are you choosing in terms of props and sets that would enhance the character, that gives us something more to see and to learn about the character. And to me, just it's adding layers to the performance that could be interesting to watch. That's the main reason why I say all this. Now, speaking of layers and watching and props and exploring things. 
I have workshops where you could explore those things with me and I can help you. I can help you make your shots even more awesome. That's my pitch at the end. You know this. If you watch this, you know this. I don't maybe don't watch this. I don't know. But that is the pitch. I have workshops. So you can sign up at any time. You can start whenever you want. It's very flexible. Link in the description, all the information. It's, that's the, you know, check it all out if you want. And speak of checking out, if by now you haven't subscribed and you feel like that's kind of neat, I find that kind of interesting and I would like to not miss the next upload, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss any of those hit uploads. And that's kind of it. So if you're still watching, as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate your patience that you watch till the very end. And there will be one more, if not two more about this. There are lots of stuff to cover. I think they might just one more about season two, currently on season three, which is also awesome. So yes, I will definitely cover season three as well. So I'll say thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next upload.